Okay, I'll get started. Um, and I like to show this picture at the beginning. You know, it's a it's a, a beautiful scenic picture of a Wisconsin location. And I guess I put that up there just to illustrate what's at risk here. Um, notice, you know, the cool, clear water, stable shorelines, uh, vegetated riparian corridor. These are some of the resources that we could lose if we have feral pig populations. And through the rest of the presentation and conversations that we have, we'll, we'll show different types of damages occurring, different risks that are out there, and what we're doing here in Wisconsin to uh, abate the issue and what's being done nationally. <coughs> So uh, the first thing that's important to know about feral pigs is since their introduction to North America, they become one of the most serious wildlife problems in the United States. Um, and a lot of folks initially will say introduction, we weren't, we weren't aware. When were they introduced? Why were they introduced? Um, we thought that pigs were native. And there is, a, there is a small variety of swine that is native to the United States. Um, the javelina, and it's, it does spend time in Texas and in some of our south and southwest areas. Um, the feral pig is a much bigger animal, and for the most part, um, is in a lot is in a lot of states across the country, and we'll, we'll get into that. But the types of damage that feral pigs can do are tremendous and wide-reaching. It is a true pest. Uh, the scope and severity of problems caused by pigs outweighs their benefit. Um, and I'll elaborate on some of these issues as we get into it. So introduction, um, likely introduced into the New World in the 1400s by ex Spanish explorers. You know, they, they basically shipped these pigs around on their boats and when they got to likely places that they might visit again, they dumped them off and um, that's how they, uh, they established themselves. They're, Feral pigs are throughout the Caribbean, um, Hawaii, um, and in Florida is typically the, was one of the introduction sites in the in the North America as well. Um, so they've been there for hundreds of years. So uh, there is a, some culture around um, feral pigs. However, uh, there again, their destructiveness is will be uh, we'll share some of that. Um, settlers and then uh, Native Americans. Use, utilize these pig populations um, and basically farmed them to some degree and when they wanted some they went and got some um, and the, the, that persisted for quite a long time. Uh, even up into the 1960s pigs were, were generally in a free range situation so they were obtained when they were wanted. Um, these feral pigs are typically of Russian or Eurasian wild boars and they're interbred regularly with domestic pigs that we have and that's the, that's typically what we have out there now so they can come in a wide variety of sizes shapes and colors <clears throat> feral the, just to define a few things feral is defined as existing in an untamed or wild unconfined state have to return to such a state from domestication so i'll be kind of use that interchangeably as well as swine, pig, and hog, I use those interchangeably as well. However, feral, um, in some cases, we, I, I like to differentiate it to some degree between wild pigs and feral pigs because we also do get reports of feral pigs which are basically recent escapes. So we might have, you know, somebody's fence breakdown and uh, a, a pig's running around and we do have a, a, a way to report those and we do get those reports and sometimes those are captured and returned to their owners and sometimes they do tend to persist on the landscape and that's what we want to try to stop. So the, uh, the slide in front of you now shows on the, uh, on the top in 1982 where the pig populations were in the United States and the red indicates a higher density of pig population on the top, on the top map. Um, and the green slightly less. However, um, nevertheless, all those colored areas in the, on the 1982 picture at the top are where pigs were located. So in a short span of 30 or so years, you can see in 2012 where pig populations are now. Um, dramatically uh, increased, especially in Texas and California, um, 
certainly more populations throughout the southeast as well in Florida and in Georgia, um, Smoky Mountains. And you'll also notice on the 2012 a few dots around the United States. Some of those dots are in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois. Uh, those weren't, uh, weren't there in 1982. So the pig population has, has moved um, dramatically in those last 30 years. And I guess we'll get into it in a couple more slides here of, of how that occurred. Um, if they had been released, you know, hundreds of years ago, how come they haven't made this transition into some of our, our more northern states until now? And uh, we'll get into that. Right, we, we not a great deal. Um, there aren't known pig populations in Minnesota. Um, I do not believe there are very many in Iowa. And if they are, they're on the far side or in the south. Um, towards the Missouri border. Illinois has some feral pig populations, um, but then again, they are more in central Illinois. There's a lot of country between us and them. Um, Michigan, which would probably has, the, as a, a northern state, probably has one of the larger populations. We have a great barrier there, Lake Michigan. So um, that tends to keep those pigs from the, from the lower peninsula, obviously, from getting into our state. There are pigs in the UP, and we do, um, that, that definitely would be a likely location of getting a pig wandering into Wisconsin from the UP. They do have some populations up there. So uh, out of any states, I think our, our biggest risk would likely be from uh, pigs crossing into the Wisconsin from the UP. Okay. So they're, they're able to cope with the cold winters up there? Yes, actually. Um, you know, there are pig populations that do well even in Canada. Um, so they are known to be right now in about 40 states, Canada, as I mentioned, in Mexico, Texas alone is estimated to have about 2.6 million. However, um, it's, it's at least that. Um, it, it's kind of hard to get a, an accurate count, as you can imagine. But as you can see, the state of Texas is fairly well outlined with the pigs and pig observations. And it's likely an underestimate. Um, how do they increase their range so dramatically in such a short time? Um, is because some of the factors that they, that are, they are known to exhibit, um, they reach sexual maturity at a very young age. So they, as soon as they are out and about, they, they, within months virtually, they can become sexually mature and they can feral multiple times in a year. So they breed quick and they breed, they breed often they can, and their, their litters are typically fairly large. They have a, they're very good parents. They have a really low mortality rate. They're very protective. Um, the adult pigs are, are, are really uh, um, very predator proof. Um, the one thing that I will point out here in Wisconsin that we don't, that they don't have in a lot of southern states is, you know, we do have a fairly high predator population. And if we were to have pigs get into Wisconsin, especially in our northern counties where predators are more uh, prevalent, you know, we do have a lot of bears, we do have a lot of wolves, we have coyotes throughout the entire state. Well, the coyotes are pretty widespread across the country. They aren't known to have an in enormous impact on the pigs. Um, however, I think bears and wolves would, could do quite well, especially with the, the, uh, the, young, the young pigs. But once a, t and a pig reaches adulthood, it is, a, it is a tough critter. It's, a hard, it's hard to actually kill that animal. Um, so they're, they're very uh, sturdy animal, I guess I would say. And good habitat, if they can get into good habitat, which they certainly can in Wisconsin, they can enhance any of those above. They're omnivores. That means they'll eat darn near anything and do well on anything. Very adaptable. They can live in uh, remote rural areas, and they can live in urban areas as well. So all those factors greatly contribute to them doing well. So some of the reason why pigs have moved around so dramatically over the last 30 years is what you're looking at right here is pigs in a trailer. And um, it, as I mentioned before, there's some, there's some cultural aspects with having pigs out on the landscape. and um, and hunting. And folks that pig hunted, and a lot of times they've had to travel to go find, go to where the pigs are to, to uh, hunt pigs. Well, 
in many cases it's believed that they thought it would be a great idea if we could hunt pigs closer to home. So um, one of the techniques used to capture feral pigs is a, is, a, is a trap, a corral type trap that they go into and then the pigs can easily be taken out of the trap and, and typically for in our purposes we would, would like to see those pigs that are trapped euthanized so that they're off the landscape. But however, in some cases, people were, are able to get their hands on them and, and move them around and put them in locations that's closer to where they'd like them to be. That's why we have populations in all, that have spread dramatically here. Um, there's also in some states it wasn't regulated. There is, was hunting preserves. So folks had fenced areas that had pigs in there. That the fence is degraded or a tree fell on the fence or something happened. Those pigs got escaped. Um, coupled with domestic pig escapes. Um, a pig can become feral, even a domestic pig that, that is loose for a period of time will start, start growing longer hair, will start adapting, will start getting along quite well on their own. So they're really easy. You don't see many, uh, you know, for example, a, a, a cow it doesn't often get um, feral in Wisconsin at least. And, um, it typically would then go to another farm where it's easy to capture where pigs on the other hand, they don't, they don't have to come back and get food. They'll do quite well. They'll eat whatever they can. Um, as I mentioned here, introdu illegal introductions into the wild and free range practices. There still are some um, uh, ethnic uh, ethnicities that will tend to not have their pigs enclosed in a, in a corral or inside of a fence that they'd rather put their pigs into a pasture type environment. And in some cases, poor fencing leads to those types of uh, escapes as well. So uh, there's a map of Wisconsin in front of you now and you can see Crawford County highlighted in red. That's the only known population where we have a breeding population of wild pigs. Um, the rest of the counties that are shaded in gray, um, all the ones that are gray anyway, I should say, are, are counties where we have had sightings. Now those are, have either turned up to be um, a feral pig that escaped from somewhere or was released by someone, but never resulted in a, a breeding population that persisted on the landscape. They were able to be captured. So you wouldn't think that feral pigs were that widespread across Wisconsin and, and I, um, I guess I can say they certainly aren't. However, over the years they've been seen in quite a few places as you can see. So some of the damage concerns that we're worried about with pigs. <clears throat> so they, they destroy native habitats, crops, lawns, riparian areas, rooting and wallowing, very destructive animal, eating, destroying ag crops, competing with native wildlife for food and other resources, known to carry and transmit 30, 30 plus diseases, have parasites, um, known to contaminate human food sources and water supplies, destroying property. Um, they compete with ground nesting birds and other small wildlife. Their rooting behavior in the forest floor disturbs all the leaf litter, um, opening that area up and often uh, removing the food sources and then uh, again, opening that up other for invasive plant species to get a foot toehold as well. Um, consume livestock feed, follow water sources for livestock, and of course vehicle collisions is, is in there as well. So there, there, it's not a short list of all the things that, um, uh, reasons that we don't want to have a feral pig population. As I mentioned about diseases, here's, a, here's some lists of some diseases, but they, you know, in where there are widespread pig populations, they can be a significant threat to the feral or to the, um, to the swine industry. Um, they will try to intermingle with, you know, typically, you know, swine industries are in confined situations in our state. However, um, they will be attracted to, feral pigs will be attracted to those. They, they can smell them. They will find those types of operations and um, that's the last thing that, that uh, breeders and, and, and growers want is to have these pigs that carry 
a lot of these known diseases that get into their domestic operations. It could, it could significantly in, affect the, the swine industry. These critters are known to carry a, a boatload of these diseases and, um, and easily transmittable. And it certainly could happen um, by field dressing a pig. Um, there, states that do have pigs and that do hunt uh, pigs, um, there's a lot of hunter warnings out there and advisements to, of what they should do if they do kill a pig and how they should deal with it and wearing gauntlets and protective gear and such when you're dealing with all the uh, biological fluids of the animal. So yeah, they, they certainly have things that can affect humans as well as domestic livestock. Destroyed native habitats, crops, lawns, riparian areas, to rooting and wallowing. So this is an urban area. This is a, 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 a actually an oak tree, and you can see the demand, what they, the the rooting behavior that they go after. Acorns, as I'm sure most of you know, are such are very high value, high fat, um, uh, um, mass crop that lots of wildlife prefer. Um, as you can, under this tree, the acorns fell off from under this tree and the, in their rooting behavior, um, they rooted up this whole area trying to clean every acorn that they could from this tree. Um, and someone, you know, would, might see this picture and say, wow, you know, how long did it take them to do something like that? They can take pigs, this is less than a night's worth of work. This can, you can wake up in the morning and have this happen in your front yard. Um, I recently saw some feral pig damage in the Great Smoky Mountains, and I said the same thing, and it was acres of damage to pasture area. And I said, gosh, how long have they been doing this? How long has this occurred? And they said, well, within the last week, this, it had all occurred. This next slide shows um, you know, damage to, to agricultural crops. That's a, that's, a known, there's a, that's a known food source, and they will, will high, hit that highly at certain times of the year. Pastures at the bottom, again, with the rooting, you know, that's, that's significant acres of pasture rooted up. So that's all the, your potential alfalfa crops or grass and such that, um, you know, folks are relying on for their livestock that, that is not certainly going to come back after that occurs. Um, the other two pictures here are very concerning too, the damage that has occurred to the wetlands and other native landscapes from pigs. You can see the wallows in that top picture on the right. Um, all this open soil, again, making it more exposed to invasion by other invasive plants. The same with the wetland picture at the, on the lower right as well. Uh, it destroyed the, destroyed the edge, um, all the native vegetation that was there is gone um, and, and certainly didn't make it uh, do it any good as well as the soil as well as the water. We don't have it a lot in Wisconsin, so it, it is, it's kind of low on our radar for the most part. However, we want to keep it low. We want to keep it, we want to keep it nil. So what are we doing here in Wisconsin um, to make sure we don't get more feral pigs in the state? So we do have a, a, a feral pig task force. Um, and there's representatives on the Feral Pig Task Force. It's, it's, it's run by the Department of Ag, Trade, and Consumer Protection. We have representatives from the swine industry, uh, from Conservation Congress, from the Department of Natural Resources, from USDA Wildlife Services, and from USDA Vet Services. And uh, we meet uh, sporadically and, and do a check-in to see where we're at with feral pigs. Uh, what uh, each agency is doing, if we're doing other, uh, different types of educational efforts, what types of reports we may have collected um, from our the reporting system that we have at the DNR, uh, what has followed up with those, what, what's going on. So we're, we're trying to monitor feral pigs, but we do need the observations and reports of feral pigs so that we can stay on top of this. Um, and we'll get to some of the ways that we can uh, report some of those feral pigs in a minute. Um, this year, or actually last year in 2014, USDA was awarded um, $20 million to help with feral pig eradication across the United States, and Wisconsin was actually selected as one of the top states because, you know, um, you could probably spend all that money in Texas and likely put some dent in it, but we'd still have pigs all over the United States. So they're starting in states that have small populations that are going to be easy to mark off the map. 
So we do have a person in uh, USDA Wildlife Services that's been devoted to monitoring our feral pig populations and trying to get access to where they are and trying to uh, make fewer of them out on the landscape. Some of the other things that we've, we've, we've been doing since oh, um, the early 2000s, um, we've changed state statutes and administrative codes to ensure that we have the, the, the backing to make sure these things are, are not brought into the state. So we made it illegal to have penned or canned hunts. So you can't open, you can't bring pigs into the state and have a, uh, a game farm type situation where you sold hunts for people to come and shoot pigs. That's illegal. They're classified as a harmful wild animal now. And they're a prohibitive invasive species. So we were, were legally have, have these behind us so that if we do find pigs in the state, we do have, we have these as support. However, you know, um, having all these things for support is, is great and we're much further ahead than some states, but last year we did have um, some of our wardens who were um, uh, reviewing some items on a Craigslist ad. They found a place in Wisconsin that was selling feral pigs. So they did check it out and the, the person had three feral pigs and he, he, he was uh, alerted to uh, those being illegal for him to have them, and he did get rid of those pigs. But it's that easy for someone to put a few in a trailer or into the back of their truck and come here and have them. And we may not know about it until it's too late. So um, that's why we're, we're very diligent trying to, to collect reports of, of them on the landscape so we can get on it before they get out of control. Some of the other advertising we do, we've made this wanted poster a number of years ago and they've provided it with numbers for people to report pigs and what they look like and, and just to make folks clear that, um, you know, we don't want them on the landscape. We, we put uh, announcements in our hunting regulations. We also do announcements through different um, email services to Wisconsin hunters who have have, signed, have provided their email addresses to us to make sure that they're alert. So prior to the gun season for deer, we'll often put uh, release news releases asking hunters to report feral pigs. We do that during the turkey hunting seasons when we have thousands of hunters and folks out on the landscape. A lot of eyes and ears out there if they see anything to report, make those reports to us. And certainly if they shoot something, we'd like to know about that too because we'd like to know more about um, the different types of diseases that pigs are known to carry, we need more data to prove, to see what we have on, on the pigs that we have in Wisconsin. Try to make it as as uh, as easy as we possibly can for folks. If they see a pig, um, you you are they are supposed to have a, a small game hunting license to shoot a pig. However, if someone brings a pig to us and says, "I shot this, and I don't have a small game hunting license." We're all kind of okay with that too. <laughs> we, we just want to get these things off the landscape. So there's no season on them. Um, we don't want them as a huntable species. We just want them off the landscape. So if they are, if they are found to be out there, um, uh, we advocate people harvesting them and reporting them and hopefully quick enough so we can try to get some samples from them so we can monitor better. So again, Education, we've, we're putting, we put big posters, we've had press releases, we have them on our website. Um, if you go to the DNR's website and put in feral pig, you'll have, see a, our page come up about feral pigs. Um, we do, we've done aerial surveys, um, fixed wing and helicopter surveys in areas of likely populations to identify them. And we're promoting landowner and obviously hunter removal. Um, and in some cases, we do wildlife services. USDA has done some trapping efforts as well. And that's just a short little blurb there at the bottom about urging deer hunters to report pig sightings. You know, in deer hunting, as most of you likely know, is very popular in Wisconsin. We, there are roughly, you know, 600,000 folks who participate in it, and that's a lot of, that's a lot of people out on the landscape that are likely to be in nooks and crannies where pigs might be hiding. Here's a picture, as I mentioned, Crawford County. Um, this is a pig that was harvested in 2013. We do get reports of hunters to shoot pigs. And um, 
again reporting those. This is a this is this is typically the coloration that we have seen in Wisconsin. It is dark like this, long hair. Notice the real long snout compared to a a domestic pig has more of a rounded head and a shorter snout. These feral pigs typically have that really long sloping snout, um, very woolly, hairy looking, um, and uh, short ears, long legs. Uh, they do quite well in our environment. This is our, our website is at the bottom, but again, if you wanted to be quick about it, you could just put in DNR and go to our website and put in feral pig and you could get to our our page where you can report sightings. Um, we will we monitor that as soon as folks let us know that a pig has been seen, we get back with them and get the statistics and, and send staff there to investigate. So with the with the uh, with all the pigs that are out there, that obviously has a huge interest from the wildlife management community um, and try and research community trying to develop ways we can um, try to reduce their impacts and try to reduce the pig population. So if you, if you just take a quick glance at some of these some of these publications that are out there from Army Corps of Engineers from ad hoc working groups, uh, other organizations, there's a lot of interest in pigs and there's a lot of interest in getting and in, in developing the new technique that's going to uh, hopefully uh, help us start winning in some of these cases. One of the new tools, and it's not necessarily a really new tool, but it's one of the ones that we're, that's being started to be used, not necessarily in Wisconsin yet, um, but in other states, it, it is a Judas pig. So a pig is captured in a live trap and uh, it's fitted with a radio collar or GPS collar. And you can see that's the harness that this pig has been put, has on him now. And you guys see the, the guy has a can of bright yellow spray paint that it looks like he got a little bit on the pig as well as the, as the harness <laughs> to make sure that that pig is very visible. Um, because then this pig comes out, it was immobilized and tied there, and after it is released, it will likely join his colleagues. We then can uh, track that pig, and he'll take us to where their hangouts are, basically. So we can then direct activities to reduce that population uh, by following that pig that has the radio collar on it. He's leading us to all his buddies, basically. Um, and, and then we'll put efforts into that area to, to, to remove those pigs. Some of the techniques, as I mentioned, are, are shooting and trapping. There's live traps. One of the techniques is, is aerial work. This is done in a lot of states. Even in Midwestern states, it has been done to reduce the pig population um, because they're, they are very hard to get at, get access to, and to keep up with. As you can see, they can uh, put their feet up and down pretty quick. So that basically the pigs are, are shot out of the helicopter and um, are then collected at, at a point after the hunt is over. And I'll bring us back to this picture because this again, this is what is at risk. This is you know our, our native Wisconsin environment that we want to try to protect. And it's, as you can see from some of the pictures that we showed, it certainly could look a lot different if, if feral pig populations get a toll hold and, and increase in Wisconsin.